There was a lot of confusion today in 2007 as to how advanced stem cell therapy uh, has progressed in terms of using stem cells for treatment of patients. Here we're going to review a study that was published three years ago in one of the highest ranked medical journals, Lancet, uh, demonstrating safety of stem cells and ability to help the heart after a heart attack. The background of the study is that after a heart attack or a acute myocardial infarction, there is a lot of scar tissue that forms, and this scar tissue, even if you successfully revascularize and you have new blood flowing into the myocardium, there's a pathological uh, sequence of deterioration characterized by decreased ability of the heart to pump called um, an inhibited left ventricular rejection fraction. The chambers of the heart, particularly the left side of the heart, become dilated and a progression at um, heart failure occurs. Now, there have been previous studies showing that stem cells can inhibit the pathological progression from, from revascularized heart attack to heart failure. Uh, these studies gave a small signal, if you will, but they didn't demonstrate conclusively. So the question of the current study is, can autologous bone marrow cells uh, ameliorate the post-infarct cardiac deterioration in a double-blinded, in a, in a randomized controlled study? So the inclusion criteria of the study was that patients had to have had the onset of the heart attack five days before entering the study. They had to have been successfully revascularized with percutaneous intervention and the stent had to have been placed in an uh, infarct-related artery, and the heart has to have displayed some abnormal motion in two-thirds of the left ventricle, abnormal motion being hypokinesis or complete non-motion, akinesis. Exclusion, the patients were not supposed to have multivessel heart disease, pulmonary edema, cardiogenic shock, organ uh, dysfunction, or cancer. The intervention, the way the patients were treated, was approximately 2 billion nucleated bone marrow cells from the iliac crest were, were um, collected, and they were infused in the infarct-related artery using a balloon. And the balloon was an over-the-wire balloon catheter. So the balloon is placed by a catheter into the infarct-related artery, and then it's, it's, um, it's inflated when it's inflated, it's inflated for two, two and a half to four minutes. During the inflation of the balloon in the artery is when bone marrow cells are put in. As the, this is called temporary occlusion. The purpose of the inflation is so that the cells will stick there. And uh, between the occlusions, when, uh, between uh, infusing cells, there's a gap of three minutes. So this was the intervention. Initially, 78 patients were identified uh, when has being eligible. Of these, 65 were randomized to either a control group, 32, or 33 into the treatment group which received the bone marrow transplant. Of these ones, two patients were not uh, eligible because of MRI at the baseline, which gave us 30 patients to, re uh, had to be controlled. Um, and also, three patients of the treatment group were not uh, eligible according to the MRI, so a 30 was chosen for the treated group. So in the end, 30 patients were um, selected and placed on optimal medical, medical care, but they were, did not receive the cell therapy, and that was a control group. The other 30 patients were in optimal medical care, but they did receive the cell therapy. And if you look at the patient characteristics, this is a sample of the patients between the control and the bone marrow treated. Most of the characteristics were non, they were all the characteristics were non statistically significantly different. This is to show that there was no biasing of the patients. Uh, at the six month interval, when you look at the left ventricular. Uh, yeah, ejection uh, and diastolic volume or end systolic volume, a global ejection fraction and other parameters, you will see that at six months there was a statistically significant increase in the left ventricular ejection fraction in the group that received the bone marrow uh, cells, the autologous bone marrow cells. 
and when you look at the figure in a table for in a figure format you will see also the statistically significant increase in left ventricular rejection fraction at six months in the group that received bone marrow but not in the group that received uh, that did not receive anything when looking at the wall motion score um, on the top panel it are the control patients the black indicates uh, non non motion or, or poor motion whereas the yellowish the, the, uh, indicates um, indicates proper motion as you can see in the top panel baseline and then six months at six months there seems to be an increase in the area of blackness uh, demonstrating that there is increased uh, akinesis or, or, or the level of motion is deteriorating on the bottom panel the bone marrow cell uh, group you can see that compared to baseline there is actually a decrease in the black area or, or a decrease in the area of poor motion indicating that not only did we have a better left ventricular rejection but also showing better motion better um, cardiac wall motion more importantly is this procedure safe no patients died or were lost to follow-up in the in uh, uh, who entered the study out of the 30 that were treated uh, there was no increases in troponin T in the serum uh, if, after the, um, the patients received the transfer of the bone marrow, this indicates that it's safe to inflate the balloon and inject bone marrow cells into the infarct-related artery. And at six months follow-up, three controls and one patient from the bone marrow uh, cell group, they needed to enter the hospital for worsening heart failure, and they were treated with optimal therapy, then they were released. And also, very importantly, there was no difference in ventricular complexes, there was no um, arrhythmias or sustained ventricular tachycardias as determined by the Walter monitoring. So the procedure seems to be safe and it seems, in conclusion, it seems to um, have efficacy in terms of increasing left ventricular ejection fraction and increasing a global wall motion score and the safety of the procedure was confirmed by the study. Uh, next steps in the future, of course, will involve combining this stem cell modality with other modalities to increase efficacy. But for now, we believe that this is some pretty strong data that stem cell therapy can be used for treatment of post-infarct heart failure. And now there are many other studies besides this one which are doing this. Thank you very much.